Okay, good morning everyone. All right, I see that after having a quiz, the turnout has become less. Never mind. Okay, uh, all right, today we'll be doing lesson three. We'll be covering uh, chapters three and four of the book of Galatians. As uh, per CCC tradition, will be a quiz, but uh, we'll be doing it at the end of the class today, okay? There'll be a quiz, same, scan the QR code, Submit immediately, you will get your score immediately. Just to highlight to everyone, last, uh, okay, never mind, I'll do that at the end. Uh. Okay, this is the same map that I've been showing you week after week. So this is the first missionary journey from Antioch. They went to Cyprus, then uh, the different churches in Galatia, Iconium, Lister, Derby. Okay, did not change since last week until today. Uh, these are just some dates, some uh, facts to for you to your own information, which is same as last time. Okay, chapter 3 and 4. Now, chapter 3 and 4, we focus more on theology. Okay, because this is where Paul starts to write more about faith versus works. He talks about the difference. He does a contrast, a comparison. The law of Moses and the promise to Abraham. Which patriarch you follow, Abraham or Moses? Hey, but I follow both, eh? But then Abraham has a promise, Moses has a law, which one you follow? And then uh, further on in chapter 3 at the end, 23 onwards, it talks about how we are children of God, sons of God, adopted, okay? And you are in God's family, not because of your genealogy, parentage, okay? But through faith. And then in uh, after that, he continues, he has more very personal pleadings okay towards the galatian churches he talks about his personal experience there and then he then moves on again back to the theology okay are we children of promise because isaac was born out of god's promise or are you descended the children of ishmael okay that was through natural earthly fleshly means okay so there's a lot of uh, OT teaching here that we'll need, we'll, we need to understand. And part of the thing is that uh, obviously this chapter 3 and 4 is Paul talks about how a promise is greater than even the law. Okay, God's promise is greater. You can be more secure in that. Okay, and then of course in part of it he actually do talk about the motives of the circumcision group. And uh, most importantly he talks about Freedom versus slavery, right? Freedom and slavery. Okay, let's go on. Now, Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. We talk Now we're going to talk about faith versus works. Now, Abraham, when Abraham was following God, he left Sumeria or the, the, the Tigris Euphrates Valley, right? He moved, he jalan. He pindah rumah, all right? He moved, he immigrated to the promised land. Got law of Moses yet? Moses not even born. There's no law. There is no law. But Abraham did get circumcised, okay? Very interestingly. Now, moving country. And when he was there, remember, he, he negotiated with God. Remember, he negotiated with God. He negotiated God, hey, don't destroy Sodom. Lah. Even if you've got 10 righteous people, you should save the city. He, during his traveling there, he was willing to sacrifice his one and only son, the promised son, Isaac. He was even hospitable to angels, right? Some angels came. He don't know who they are, but they, he welcomed them. Now, here's a question. Abraham did so many good deeds. Did he earn his salvation? Did he get the promised child because did he earn it? Or was it given to him because of God's promises? So you see, the, the text talks about how your, the law cannot save. The law cannot save you. It's only a guardian. Okay? And it has lapsed because Christ has appeared. Now, very interesting thing. Huh? You go to shopping mall, right? It's now, they open 10 o'clock. You want to go in, can go in or not? 
Cannot what? It's now 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock. You can't go in, right? What's stopping you? The door, the door is locked. Lah. No matter how, I mean, you have to break the door, right? Now, of course, in earthly terms, we can break the door. But you see, the door, you see, that represents the law. It's a barrier. It's a guardian. It's to prevent you from doing something. Okay? But again, because it only, so-called, it's a physical hindrance. If you really want to break the door, can you break the door? Anytime. So that is the weakness of the law. Okay, and we'll talk more about that later on. But the law cannot save you. It's just like a guardian. It's just like a barrier, protection. Okay? Now, and then, of course, uh, in James chapter 2, verse 14 to 26, James talks about your faith is shown by your deeds. Okay? But you are not saved by your deeds. Again, faith versus works. And this is a very important distinction. Your deeds reflect your faith but your deeds do not save. Okay? And this uh, Genesis 15, 6, James 2, 23, Galatians 3, 6, it, always, it keeps talking about how Abraham's faith is credited as righteousness. Not his deeds. His faith. Because, you see, if it is deeds, now, most of us are working, right? You clock in, you clock out. You got a time sheet. Then you show your boss, Nah, see my time sheet. You better pay me my wages. I deserve it. Now, you go to God and you say, Nah, see how, much, how many times I read the Bible? How many times I attend to his classes? How many times I do this? How many? Do? And then you say, I deserve my salvation. And God will say, Aha, uh -huh, and then what else you want to tell me? No. It's given to us through a promise, not through our deeds. You can never earn that salvation. You can never earn that salvation. Okay, let's take a look at a, not a real example, but a rel relatively ex extreme example. You somehow managed to borrow $100 million from the bank. Okay, Silicon Valley Bank. Okay? And now, Bo Lui cannot pay back. Because COVID, la, your business went down. Now, the deadline to pay your uh, the loan, right, okay, is 26th of March. Okay? 26th of March. Now, somehow, for some strange reason, you know, you post it on social media, you say, ah, yeah, my life will trend, ah, and then some guy calls up and says, Okay, brother, uh, I help you. I promise to pay your debt. And then uh, he actually gives you a check. Okay? He gives you a check. And it's dated 5th of March. So you can only bang in the check on the 5th of March, right? You bang in the check on the 5th of March. You left the money there, 26th of March, the bank deduct. Pyong! Is your debt paid? Yes. Did you earn the hundred million dollars? You didn't. You didn't earn the hundred million dollars. It was a, a gift. Because this guy, for whatever strange reason, decided he wanted to give you this gift. Now, but here's the question. You have the check, right? It's dated 5th of March. You put it inside your drawer, you leave it there, and you never bang in the check. 26 March, what will happen? You're bankrupt. Because you didn't bang in the check. And then when you go to court, you say, no, 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 see, I got this check, I got this check. Then the judge will scold you, right? Hey, you stupid fellow, why don't you bang in the check? Keep the door for what? You need to act in faith and put this check into the bank. Did the act of banking in the check save you? Well, it didn't, but if you didn't do it, you won't be saved either. You need, but it's a gift. You did not earn this freedom from bankruptcy. Now, 
Remember you banging the check on the 5th of March, right? The money sitting there until 26. You got two weeks. Or three weeks. Three weeks, right? You decide to go, hey, 100 million is a lot of money. Leh. Hey, let me go and buy a sports car. Hey, let me go and buy a condo. Hey, let me go makan at uh, this place. Let me go for holiday in... And then, soon or soon, uh, for the time you reach 26 March, uh, guess what? You spend all the money. What happened? You gone case. You gone case. If you spend all the money, or even part of it, you still face the bankruptcy. You see, our faith, this salvation that God gives us, is the same. We don't earn it. It's a promise. It's given to us. But there are certain things we need to do. And there are certain things we need to refrain from doing. You need to refrain from doing. So that on that fateful day, the 26th of March, okay, you'll be free from bankruptcy. If you didn't do certain things, you do all the things you shouldn't. But here's the interesting thing. From 5th of March to 26th March, uh, you get interest, right? You see, this is the bonus God gives us. The interest that you can gain uh, from this period to this period. God doesn't say, hey, you need to pay me back. Did he ever say, pay me back the interest? Did he never say, pay you back the interest? No. You can keep the interest. That's to your benefit. And the longer you keep it, the more interest you get. The more interest you get. But of course, the bonus is not guaranteed la, because, you know, interest rate la, is based on market, la, market changes. La, okay? But anyway, all right. So, you look at this example and see how that fits in the faith that God is explaining to us. And that's why you notice uh, in, the, in, uh, in, in the New Testament, the analogy that's always given is it talks about debt. So it always talks about bankruptcy, a debt, how to be freed from a debt. Okay? And this is how you will need to be freed from a debt. A debt that is impossible. 100 million, how many years you need to work to earn it? A thousand years also not enough. Uh, right? A thousand years is not even enough. That's how rich God's grace is to us. Okay, uh, these are some verses to talk about how in the Old Testament, right, in Deuteronomy 27, 26, it says, Curse is anyone who does not uphold the words of this law by carrying them out. It's to emphasize that Paul is trying to talk about these verses because the law is onerous. It's very difficult. It's a burden. You cannot fulfill its obligation, but you must you must, if you are under the law of Moses, you must fulfill the obligations. Okay? It doesn't matter how disciplined you are, how fit you are, okay? How smart you are, how rich you are, how talented you are, how whatever you are. You can have whatever characteristic. It is impossible to fulfill all the words of the law. Okay? And then, and then the other thing, it, it, okay, the, uh, in verse Deuteronomy 21, 22, 23, it talks about how being on a, hung on a pole, being, being crucified, is being God's curse. So what is the solution? The solution then is in these verses that uh, is written in the text. It talks about having lived by faith, having a new spirit, a new heart, a new spirit, a new heart and a new spirit. God is preparing the people and saying, look, this is what I'm going to do because I know the law is impossible for you to fulfill. I gave it to you for what purpose? Guardian some protection, okay? But it's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is Jesus on the cross. Okay, so, so you see, faith is shown by deeds, right? We talked about that in James chapter 2. Now, I want you just to compare. Remember, there's these two groups of people trying to tell the Galatian churches what to do. Now, make a quick comparison. Look at the life of Peter and Paul. And compare that with the life of the circumcision group. Their life is a reflection of their faith, remember? How many missionary journeys did the circumcision group go to? Never. They only always go to churches that were started by Paul or Peter or somebody else. Paul and Peter were the ones who went to start all, go on these missionary journeys to many places. 
whose life was at risk when they did the preaching, when they were going around? It's Peter and Paul. They were arrested, put in jail. Circumcision group, go go jail or not? Never. Who would want to arrest them? For what? What sacrifices did the circumcision group make for the Galatian churches? What sacrifices did Paul make for the Galatian churches? So the question is, who loves more? Who is the one imitating Christ? Then it makes sense you want to listen to who. Okay? Now here's a very interesting thing, right? Okay, if you are Roman, lah, if you are Roman, in Galatians 3.27 it says, you are baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. If you are a Roman citizen, the custom, okay, you know in, in, in Roman custom, just like many other uh, cultures, there's a, what they call a manhood rite of passage. Okay, a manhood rite of passage. So, in Roman culture, when you are underage, you have to wear a, a, what they call a toga, which is, you know, you see the, 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 the dressing, the Roman dressing, but it's a different color. So that when you walk in the streets, you go to a, a, a function, you'll start to wear that seat. Oh, this, you're wearing this? You are a child. But once they reach manhood, they wear the white color one. Okay? It's a sign. You have reached manhood, adulthood. You are no longer a minor under the guardianship. When you are clothed with Christ, you are no longer under the guardianship of the Torah. You are now an adult. Because you're by faith, you're now clothed with Christ. You have gone through the quote unquote right of passage to manhood. Paul was very obviously very familiar with Roman culture. Okay? So that's why we you know he it talks about uh, in the different passages the guardianship the the, the we, we were uh, there's trustees and whatever because we're minors now we are adult. Okay? So you are baptized in your Christ, have clothed yourself. You're now wearing the toga virilis, okay? The special robe. All right, now let's talk about the guardianship a bit more, okay? Guardianship. In Galatians 4 2, it says the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time. Now, here's the thing about protection and about being under the guardianship there are a lot of rules, right? Boy, don't touch this, cannot touch with knife. Cannot uh, this, cannot that, cannot climb here, cannot climb there. We set a lot of rules for our kids because, well, they're chill, they're kids, the children. When they reach manhood, we we'll say, uh, they touch this, they touch the knife, uh, then we say, okay, la, you cut yourself, not not boy, tai chi liao. Because we accept that they're adults. Now, in Matthew 12 12, it says, How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? It is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. So you see, what was the purpose? of that protection. Is it to restrict us from doing good? No, no, actually it's supposed to restrict us from doing bad things, right? So if you're a child and your parents say don't touch the knife, it's because they're scared you hurt yourself or hurt others. But if you see there's a need for you to take a knife and cut something to help your parents, you know, maybe it's cooking or whatever, you take it and you do it. The rules are not meant to restrict you from doing good, it's meant to restrict you from causing harm. So you see, but the, the Pharisees, they transform the law of Moses to hinder you in a very wrong manner. The law is meant to be a what? A guide. You know, when it's dark, you're in a tunnel, you need a guiding light. You don't need a straight jacket. You cannot move. You cannot move one inch. Or actually, you can move one inch, lah. but that's about it. Lah. You're restricted. That's not the purpose of the law. And that's why God was always talking about, you need to examine the practices, the principles, and the commands. What is the purpose? What is God's intention? What is the heart of God's commands? Now, in Singapore, some of us, we drive. Lah, huh? You ever see on the road, got concrete barrier? Concrete barrier, right? 
if you're driving a car, you see the concrete barrier, and you think uh, you can still go through, uh, what will happen? Reality will hit your car pizza. Right? You have crashed. You will learn consequences because that barrier is a protection. Now, change it to a traffic cone. This is a cone, right? The cone, uh, you, can you crash through the cone? You can. But usually behind the cone, there's something else, right? Which will then be the consequences. So you see, the law is meant to be a cone to guide you. But you still want to yang eliya, you face more trouble. But the Pharisees say, no, traffic cone, not safe. Let me make it into concrete barrier. Then it becomes very restrictive. But you must remember, uh, if you don't follow the law, who suffers the consequences? Who has to bear the responsibility? It's you. And the people you love will be affected. They will be affected. But that is the purpose of having a guardian. Okay? Now, transfer to today. Okay, let me talk a bit more about it. Deuteronomy 5.14, it talks about it's a, the, uh, the Sabbath day, right? It is for, your, for you not to do any work, but also your male servant and servant, female servant may rest as well as you. You see, what is God's heart? God's heart is not just for the Jews to rest. He actually had a heart for their servants to rest. Exodus 35.3, do not light a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. Okay, you know, if you go and do a study uh, about what are the conditions uh, under current Orthodox Jewish tradition now, today, as they practice it, when can you light a fire and when you cannot? It's very interesting because the word here says your dwelling, right? So they say if it's your own house, you can light the, you, you, you cannot light the fire. But if it's a public place, you can. There are so many rules, it's crazy. All right, but here in uh, they, they have what they call the 39 melahoh, melakah, okay? The 39 categories of work. And they will explain to you in detail, boom, 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 boom. 39 categories. What you can do, what you cannot do. So that day, I, I think some of us heard, remember, they have what they call a Sabbath uh, elevator. Sabbath elevator, you get in, you no need to press the button, it will stop at every floor. <laughs> okay? So that means you're not doing anything. You're not doing any work because you didn't press the button. So you can use the elevator. Okay? The, you can walk further. The furthest you can walk is 1.2 kilometer in a day. They even have a, a Sabbath stove. A, because you can't cook. You cannot cook. But you can keep the food warm. But you can only keep food warm if you get a Sabbath stove. Even carrying items. Okay? There's all these different different rules. See, the law is already very onerous. It's already very hard to keep. With this 39 melahor, it becomes worse. Is that the heart of God to make our life more miserable and difficult? Now, they became very dogmatic. They added more the command. In many ways, they twisted the law. Okay? The circumcision group did similar thing because by adding that the Gentile Christians need to be circumcised. That's not in the New Testament. They were adding as well. They were twisting the gospel. Paul said, isn't faith enough? Why do you need circumcision? Now, I want to apply a little bit uh, this, the positive part of guardianship. And that's called accountability. Accountability is not a bad thing, but it's how it's being done. If you do it the way of the Pharisees, and you make those extra laws, the 39 Melahor, into equal to the 613 commandments of the Old Testament, then that's bad, because then it becomes oppressive. But if you understand it's a protection, it's a guardian. Accountability is actually very beneficial because it's a guiding light in darkness. It, now, here's the, but here's the thing, okay? Here's the thing. Okay, let me give you an example of group date, okay? Singles, those of us singles, we know, right? 
we, we encourage people to go on dates as a group. What is the advantage? How does it protect you? Because when you're with people, you know, let's face it, lah, it tends to st stop you from doing things that you shouldn't do, right? Because when you're in a group, and then if you really did something, somebody observe, you can say, hey, bro, sis, I think we, we shouldn't do that. That's how accountability helps you. Okay, because there's some people helping you. Now, of course, and going on a group date, what's the other advantage is that you get to know more people. You get to support each other, you get to help each other, you get to share resources, share this, share that. I mean, so in, in other words, see, accountability can help you in your faith when you use it well. Okay, but when you go overboard, it becomes restrictive, then it becomes a weakness. Okay, and that's what we need to be careful of. Use accountability in the right way. But here's the thing. Remember the, the, the 39 Malahoth, right? The categories of work. You see, the 39 becomes a system. A system doesn't guarantee you'll be spiritual. A system doesn't make you have faith. It helps you. Now, there's what we call, that mean, it's an efficient use of limited resources. Lah, huh? There's certain, by having a schedule, having a system, you know, you save time, <clears throat> you, you have a chance to train people, you have a chance to gain experience, okay? Why not have three Sunday service? Why just have one? What's the advantage of having three Sunday service? More flexible, right? Got this time, this time, this time. Smaller group, easier to mix around with more people. But what is the disadvantage of three service? I need to have three preacher, three song leader, three people doing this, three more group of people doing that, three more kids kingdom thing. I need, and then I got to clean the place three times. I got to rearrange three times. I got to turn on aircon for three times. So what is the advantage in this? There are pros and cons for whichever way you do this or that, having that system. But the system doesn't guarantee faith. It does not. We are doing this series of, of lessons, right? On uh, on Galatians or Epistles. I, I hate to say this, but just because you sit in this class, it doesn't guarantee that you will be spiritual. Coming to this class will help you. But you still, at the end of the day, need to make the right decisions so that you will actually grow. Attendance of a system does not guarantee that faith, okay? But it's extremely beneficial, especially if you are younger in the faith, younger in age, younger in maturity, okay? So, church system cannot save us, only God can. It can help, the system helps to bring us to faith. So, we need to again understand, the guardianship is to guide, but it cannot save us, okay? All right, let's move on. Okay, now Galatians 3.28, <clears throat> many people think this is a passage about Paul saying, promoting equality, right? Social justice. The verse says, neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male or female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. And there's a similar parallel verse in Colossians 3.11. This is nothing, Paul is not writing to promote equality. He's attacking a tradition of the Jewish, which is they have a morning prayer, which you're supposed to say every day. All right, it says, and in this prayer, they actually say that, uh, God, I'm, you know, I'm blessed, am I? Because, blessed are you because you didn't make me a Gentile. That's why it makes a decision, Jew or Gentile. That, I'm not a slave, that's why it talks about slave or free, that I am not a woman, that's why it says neither male nor female. He's actually talking about one of the core prayers of the Jewish culture at that time, the Jewish religion at that time, saying this prayer, okay, and this is the reference, uh, Tosefta, Berhot, and uh, a few other, okay, he's trying to show the weakness of the Jewish prayer system, the patriarchal system, the tradition, he's telling us 
is Christ is for all. Doesn't matter Chinese, doesn't matter your religion, your race, doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your gender. The faith in Christ is available to all of us. He's not talking about equality, okay? And very interestingly, even among the Greeks, there was a similar uh, statement, okay? Uh, this is uh, Thales and Socrates. This is from one of the books that were written. He says, you know, uh, there were three blessings here, okay, that they gave to fortune, the god of fortune. He says, first, that I was born a human and not one of the brutes, meaning barbarians. Next, I'm a man, not a woman, and a Greek, not a barbarian. So you see, even the Greek culture promotes a distinction between the, I'm Greek, I'm better. You, barbarian, brute, I'm man, you, woman. No. Paul says, the faith is for all. But he's not talking about equality. Okay. Last point. All right, we're reaching the end. Are we getting closer or are we getting further apart? Now in Galatians 4, 12, 16, he talks about how, well, I became like you, you became like me. You know, we're learning from each other. He had some illness, and then he said, did you treat me, treat my weaknesses, my illness with scorn and contempt? And he says, no. He's talking about how do we treat each other, okay? Scorn and contempt or love and respect, okay? Sounds like marriage class, like love and respect, okay? And then he made the very interesting statement. He said, am I now your enemy for telling you the truth? Okay? Now, one of the arguments that scholars believe is that one of the arguments that the Judaizing uh, group, the circumcision group said is that Paul didn't reveal the full gospel. He only shared a little bit. And he was trying to say that Paul is keeping secret. Let me reveal to you the full gospel. You need to get circumcised. Okay? Now, now Paul is saying, no, no, no. There's only one gospel, the same gospel I shared with you last year on my first missionary journey. Okay, of course he doesn't know that he doesn't call it the first missionary journey, okay? But now I'm telling you the truth. Why am I your enemy? Why am I your enemy? And then he actually talks about the motive. The motive of the Judaizers. They are trying to alienate you, the Galatian churches, from me, Paul. And, what's, and for what purpose? So that you can be zealous for them. It sounds like as though it's a political party running for election, right? That's what Paul is saying this circumcision group is doing. They're like running for election and they're trying to get votes for any election. Please vote for me, don't vote for Paul. Paul is saying this is not how we function as a church. People who try to alienate you trying to drive you further apart rather than trying to draw you closer. Those are the people that we don't want to mix with. Okay? He actually challenges and calls out their motive, that they are trying to alienate them. And of course, you contrast that with Paul in Galatians 1.10. Am I now trying to please men or am I trying to please God? Am I trying to gain the approval of men or of God? And he's telling us, let's gain the approval of God. Oh, I forgot I added this yesterday. Okay, this is just a simple table to contrast uh, the last section of chapter 4, where he talks about um, the faith and law. He does a comparison, right? So, faith and law... Of course, the faith we get through Jesus and the law is from Moses. But the faith is open to who? All humanity, Jew and Gentile, it doesn't matter. But for the law of Moses, it's only open to the Jews. And if you want to become a Jew, you have to go through the circumcision and all that. Through faith, we are free. We are the son of the free woman, right? And therefore, we are heirs together with Christ. But if you are through the law of Moses, you are 
the son of the slave woman. Okay? We receive faith through the promise, the promise to Abraham. We receive the faith through the Spirit. Okay, and later in chapter 5, we'll talk about walking in the Spirit and things like that. But the law is about flesh because you have to be born a Jew. Your father or your and your mothers have to be a Jew. It's through flesh, not through a promise, not through a spirit. And that's why faith, we look to a heavenly Jerusalem. But if you live by the law of Moses, you would be looking at an earthly Mount Sinai and earthly Jerusalem. Because that's where the temple is. Okay, and of course, the faith is represented by Sarah and her child of promise, Isaac. And the law is represented by Hagar, the slave woman, and her child, Ishmael. And these are the verses that go along with it. All right, so, okay, that is more or less the end. Uh, these are the verse locations that we've talked about. All right, uh, Gal Galatians 3, 6, Abraham believed God. He was credited as righteousness. Verse 3, 18, it talks about the inheritance is if it's on, on the law, but God gave it to Abraham through a promise. And in verse 34, uh, chapter 324, it talks about the law is a guardian. And 328, we talk about it's not about equality, it's just talking about, uh, but he's sharing, making an, uh, a point that is open to all, whether regardless of whether you're Jew, Gentile, slave or free, male or female, you can be in Christ. And again, it talks about the heir, and then he talks about in first four, chapter 412, Become like me, I became like you. Am I now your enemy for telling you the truth? Don't allow people who are trying to alienate us from each other, but uh, we need to be close to each other. Okay, and um, okay, these are all the same video links and the books. And okay, this is the Q&A. All right, let's just go quickly to back to the quiz. Okay, uh, okay. So please scan the QR code. Is the same six multiple choice questions. Uh, just take the answer, submit, and you will straight away know your score. Okay? Just to highlight to everyone, last week uh, there were 39 responses. Everyone got question three, right? Uh, there was question two, 38. Question one, I uh, was surprisingly uh, 23, but I guess it's geography is confusing for a lot of us. And uh, question five also was another geography thing, which we only got 26. Uh, and yeah, so everyone did well. We mostly got five or six. Uh, so don't worry, keep trying, keep learning. Okay, so quiz two. And um, where's the bike? Yeah, just, all right. Those of us who have taken the quiz, uh, please get a, uh, Kit Kat from uh, Joyce, okay, in front here, as your reward for taking the quiz, okay? Don't worry about what your score, just take the, the Kit Kat, okay? Bobby, you can take two. Take two, I can Recording card already, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, they'll cut accordingly. Lah. Okay, everyone done?
Okay, uh, so all right, so quiz over. Uh, do we have any questions from anyone about any of the, the anything from week one, week two, today's lesson? Any question about Galatians in general? Uh, from anything that you've read or any of the videos you've watched or any other material that you have sourced on your own? Any question? Okay, if not, you can always scan the QR, the, this QR code for the Q&A and post a question uh, which will be answered at next week's class. Okay, all right, that's uh, the end of today's class. Yep. Any other announcement, anything? No, all right, then I'll... Cafe, uh, JJ Cafe is still on. Yeah, Bye. okay, yeah. Are the slides from last week's class available? Yeah, the, okay, last week's class, uh, they are, apparently they have not uploaded into the description. They will be doing it uh, this one, two days. And likewise, for today's uh, video, one is up, they will put the uh, slides up there as well. So, otherwise, then, uh, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.